Alright, I'm Johnny Jungle Guts. I'm here to talk about new comics for the week of May 21st, 2014. I got my girl Onion here to help me up. She's a little shy. First comic I want to talk about is Velvet. The characters here are very sexy, yet... One of you's gonna have to go. Alright, Ed Brubaker, Steve Epting, wrote Captain America Winter Soldier. Didn't get any money for it. Now they're writing Velvet. There was one sort of saddening thing about the comics industry that was written in the letters section. This is in a response to a fan. But with all that said, I don't see us going back to Cap or Bucky, at least not anytime soon. Because there's nothing like seeing an adaptation of your work become the biggest movie in the world to make you want to own your own comics. Heh. <laughs> I couldn't be more thrilled with how the Cat movie came out, but the next time I'm talking about a movie or a TV show based on my work, I want it to be one that we own. So, you know, the comics industry, a lot of writers are sort of writing with the hope that eventually their projects will be taken to be a film. You know, I don't think Ed Brubaker's writing this book with only that in mind. Up next, I want to talk about Forever Evil, number seven. All the fanboys were mad because it came out so late. But I don't spend every waking minute of my life trying to keep up with DC continuity, so I didn't really care. And you know what? This issue was pretty good. It had everything I wanted to see in a big DC crossover. We got operatic drama, godlike feats of power. I really like this part where Black Adam and Sinestro just move the moon. They just, you know, they just push the moon out of the way of the sun. You got characters making moves that you didn't expect, but make sense. Up next we have Daredevil by Mark Wade and Chris Samney. This comic is using characters like the Owl, the Shroud, just real C-listers in my book. The Shroud guy, like he's a villain, he's a good guy, he's a bad guy. I don't care. If you're using C-list characters, it can be really good and funny like in Superior Foes of Spider-Man. But here it's just making me not interested in the whole thing. Up next we have Wonder Woman. Goran Suzuka's drawn in instead of Cliff Chang. But... Cliff Chang did draw the cover, and I want to take note of that. Okay, so Wonder Woman looks a lot like classical depictions of St. Sebastian here. Uh, St. Sebastian is considered to be the patron saint of homosexuals, and he's often depicted tied to a tree and shot full of arrows, a sort of subliminal part of gay art history. Cliff Chang did go to Harvard or something for literature, it's possible that he's injecting this hoity-toity stuff in here, and that's pretty cool. Alright, Thor, God of Thunder. I think it's alright. What is really impressive about it is a sad Ribak's ability to draw faces. We got Thor's granddaughters with really distinct faces. We got Thor flirting right here. He's looking sheepish and cute. And then this, this high-powered executive jerk-off guy who's sort of the villain, like... They all look really different from one another. And it is interesting to see, like, Thor, he's, like, a god of thunder, but he has to deal with all these, like, lawyers and corporate culture. But I'm going to have to say my favorite comic of the week was Forever Evil number 7. I'm sorry, I can't even lie about it. It just gave me everything I needed. 